Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Well, welcome back, pet parents. Thank you so much for joining us. I have a super, super incredible treat for y'all. Pam Roussel is here with us from Perfectly Holistic. And y'all know we've been talking the past few weeks about holistic modalities and how to incorporate holistic healthcare into your pet's healthcare routine. And uh, Pam recently was kind enough to come join me for a live video. You may have seen it up on either her channel or my channel where we talked about finding an integrative veterinarian. And Pam, she actually, um, she has her, of course, a website, Perfectly Holistic, P-U-R-R-R, holistic.com. And she helps cats primarily. So Pam, I wanted to have you on to tell everybody a little bit about what it is you do and how you help pets um, because it is all holistic, everything you do. Mm -hmm. It is, it is. So I, I would call myself a holistic health coach for cats and cat parents. And I'm an, I'm a muscle tester. So I work with energy medicine. Um, I do muscle testing or energy testing. And I use that as like a main tool to assess a cat and ask their body, you know, identify stressors and imbalances in the body, sensitivities, emotional things, things like that. And then I also use the muscle testing to um, address whatever's going on so I can figure out what products do you need, what supplements, what homeopathy or what medicines, you know, what energy work, whatever it is that might help bring that body back into balance um, with specific, you know, product recommendations and protocols to follow so that they're just not left with, okay, I've got all this information, but I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> so I kind of walk them through the process. Of okay, now we know what's going on. Now let's take steps, methodical, practical steps to get you know your cat in the right direction. Sometimes um, it, you know healing takes a while, so I just mm -hmm. tell people you got to be patient. You know, if your cat has had an underlying health condition for months or years, it's not going to turn around in one week. You know, we just have to keep reminding ourselves just the same as with people. You know, if we're dealing with chronic issues. Don't expect, you know, one supplement to change your life in two days. It just doesn't work like that. But if you give the body the right tools that it needs, it can heal itself. But you just have to be very methodical and you have to figure out what those right tools are. And that's where muscle testing for me has just been a life changer. And it's just made a huge difference with, with clients. It as really well is. Yeah, it really is a huge, I mean, uh, just on a personal note, on my own personal health journey, I spent, well, I spent a long period of my life very much in the like pharma camp, like give me a pill, mm -hmm. get it done and you know, I'm good, right? And that I learned, I think I'm fortunate that I learned fairly early on in my life that that is inappropriate. And not everybody is fortunate enough to have even learned that yet, much less early on in their lives. And so even, even once I found more holistic modalities and realized that there's a whole other world out there um, outside of just, you know, doctors treating symptoms and, um, you know, big pharma providing us a pill for every ill, right? That's um, true. I still spent years in doctor's offices saying, you know, getting blood work done and what is going on because things are, they're not working. Like they, they can't find any reason for what's going on. Everything looks good, but still my body is not functioning the way I know it's supposed to be functioning because everybody else's body is functioning that way. Right. right. And so 
after spending many years in many doctor's offices, having so much blood work done, I, I literally went in and had a lady one day, um, because, you know, you just go in and, and they jab you and pull all the blood. And she said to me, Ooh. and I'm ter I am mortified of needles. Like, oh, if yeah. I see, I can't even watch a needle on TV. Oh. Mm -mm. No, no, and <laughs> no. <laughs> And I, right went there, I run out of the room. I was like, oh, right. Oh, oh. Yes, Can't that's exactly how I am. I will do mm -hmm. anything to avoid a needle. And a one, you know, this one nurse said to me, I came in and she looked at the paperwork and she was like, does your doctor want you to leave with any blood? And I didn't like, I didn't process that at first. And I'm like thinking like, am I supposed to take a blood sample to my, you know, that's where my mind went yeah. and she laughed. Yeah. And she was like, no, we're We're taking so much blood from you today. <laughs> like, I don't know. If you're going to be like, okay with you, you're going to have enough to go home with. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but and even after all of that, still, uh, we don't know why you're, you, we don't know why your body's not functioning the way it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. So I started seeing a holistic health practitioner um, probably around six or seven months ago. And it is a slow process, but I, like the first time I got on the table and she muscle tested me, I cried and I don't. Not, not because it hurt or she said anything wrong, but it was like, my body felt like, oh my gosh, somebody's actually listening to me. It's and incredible. It really, really was. And, and, you know, of course there's still a lot of skeptics out there, but just that alone, like that experience alone, my body is telling me this, this is the right path for you right now. Yeah. And it really is absolutely incredible. <laughs> it, it really is. And if people have never experienced muscle testing on themselves, like chiro some chiropractors do that. Mm -hmm. And of course, a lot of naturopaths and natural health practitioners know how to do that. Or they'll use some sort of a bioresonance machine, uh, which is really cool too. Just It's incredible the information it can pull from the body that's so accurate. And even if you bring in like your blood work, it 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 correlates so well with what your blood work would say you know what they find mm -hmm. it, it just it, it's beautiful when it can work together like that but you're right it is pretty incredible to be able to finally have a tool that would help you find what you the right tools that your body needs to get back into balance and to identify the things that are stressors or causing imbalance so that we know what to stop doing and what to start doing, you know, that's different because mm -hmm. a lot of times we're our own worst enemy. You know, we get in our own way because we think we need to take X, Y, Z just because we think we need to take that. But when we find out that that's really not doing any good, or perhaps it's, it's impeding a healing process somewhere, you know, but we just don't know. So that's why I find, the energy works so, so incredible and so helpful. It is. And and the reason that I, I brought up my experience is because our pets can't tell us, you know, they're, they, we don't speak the same language. So if you mm -hmm. have an experience like that for yourself, then yeah. you can see like just how powerful it can be to help your pets as well, because they can't vocalize to us that, oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. I actually found muscle testing because of a friend of mine was going to a naturopath clinic and she mentioned to me one time, she goes, Oh yeah, I was there. And I saw this lady bring her cat in and I'm like, cat, <laughs> she takes her cat there. And so it always stuck back in the back of my mind. And when one of my cats was having what appeared to be food sensitivities and after going to, you know, the, the veterinary dermatologist for a lot of money and getting zero answers. I remember that I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to take her to the naturopath clinic and see what they can do. And I was blown away because I had never seen muscle testing before then, but to see them identify which proteins or which foods that she was sensitive to and doing energy work to clear that sensitivity and to this, you know, and for years going forward, she never had another allergy outbreak again, or, or she had the chin acne mm -hmm. um, because of the food stuff. And she never had that problem again. It's like, 
bingo. Amazing. Now I know, now I know where I'm going to go for answers because that was the shortcut instead of, you know, so many times we go the long route trying to find all these other answers and we could just use muscle testing and figure out, let's get straight to the, to the problem instead of putting band-aids on all the symptoms, which is, right. what, which is what I was, what we were all trained to do. That's, you know, how I grew up, you know? Absolutely. And, and I mean, that's still what we're taught today. I mean, I know it hasn't been that long since I graduated college and, you know, we're taught how to conduct it. I, I, I graduated with a degree in psychology, but we still are taught, you know, how to conduct studies and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all the statistics and all, all the things. And that's still, it's just a, you know, process of elimination. And that can be great for sure. But if we can bypass all of that, if we can bypass the, the time it takes to get there, because mm -hmm. sometimes we don't have the time, right? Like some animal with some animals, it's like, it's now or never, it's a last ditch ever. And that's generally how people find holistic modalities to begin with. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. I can't tell you how many people get to me by the time they get to me, I am their last hope. Mm -hmm. I've had people call me or reach out to me that said, my vet told me there's nothing more they can do. They don't know of anything else. They can't figure it out, whatever. And I don't know where else to go. And I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> you're not here by accident. You found me for a reason. And I truly, truly believe that. And it's so heartwarming and it's, it just reinforces my purpose when I see those same pets turn a corner and get back on a health track that their vets can't even figure it out. It's like, oh my gosh, what an honor and a blessing to be able to be on this path with them and see the transformation. I mean, you just, you can't even put that into words sometimes. Yeah. And that that's important too, that we're not, we're not saying don't, don't see a veterinarian, right? Yeah, like, absolutely. I, especially lately, am just like hitting home this idea of having a medical team for your pets. You don't see one doctor your entire life. Mm -hmm. So why would your pets? So Pam, I know on your website, you of course offer your services, which mm -hmm. are incredible. And I highly recommend anybody anybody that needs them, seek them <laughs> out. Um, but I mean, and you are kind of like a, a one woman powerhouse over there, but you also offer other services on your website, correct? I do. For, I do. You have I other do. people who, who I help. have incredible ladies on our team that have joined our team. Um, I've got three animal communicators. Um, one specializes in lost pets, which is a very unique gift. Yeah. Um, and then I have a, a gal who does Reiki and she does that for both pets and pet parents. And it's all remote, which is amazing. And then I also have a gal, one of my animal communicators does Akashic records. So she taught, she taps into the Akashic records for pets. And then what, my Reiki gal also does Akashic records for people. And she does past life healing and angel re angel readings as well. So it's kind of a conglomerate of the woo woo world, which I love, you know, yeah. and just really trying to bring home that spiritual spiritual concept and the spirituality to um, a holistic approach to our health because it's not just physical, you know. We're we are spiritual beings having a physical experience. And so tying in the spiritual with the emotional and the physical all in one, you can get incredible results. Um, I have a client whose cat tends to get really, really upset when she goes out of town, even though dad is still home. But to the point of pica, like eating stuff he's not supposed to oh, eat, he gets really, really, really obsessed in, in all that and just really, go, I guess, emotionally goes into a really bad state. So that he feels like that is he has to eat something that's not food related to get that that brain connection to be soothed. You know, it's that opioid receptor site in our brain um, 
that drives that compulsion to have to eat something to get that soothing effect. And so I mentioned to her the other day, I said, you know, I wonder if you guys, I wonder if there was something in a past life that you guys shared where he, something happened to you or something to him when you were apart. And that may be why he gets so concerned and freaked out when you're not with him now. And so she's she's gonna do a um, I don't remember I don't know if it was, it was a past life healing. She's gonna do a past life healing to see if she can identify something because Lori is amazing, so she'll find it. Just yeah. you know, it's just another tool that we have to plug in to get some answers of, to behaviors and um, health issues, things that we bring forward maybe generationally that we're not even aware of you know, genetics, behaviors, emotional baggage, things like that. It's just really, really interesting. And I'm really, really blessed to have these ladies. They're so talented. <laughs> it is so interesting. And um, to our listeners, if y'all remember back in October, when I had Layla Morgan Wild on the podcast, I, I gave y'all a glimpse into what I had been dealing with with my cat Romeo and Pam, you're familiar with him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How'd you work with Romeo in the past? And little Napoleon, <laughs> he <laughs> for sure is. And that is one thing that she mentioned that I have been contemplating is a, a past life healing for him. And, and of course, you know, I'm just over here constantly weighing the risk we were, you know, I'm a, I'm a Libra, right? So I'm just <laughs> constantly like looking for that, that balance and weighing things out to the point where I, I have a hard time making decisions. <laughs> but um, on one hand, I feel like we, I know that he doesn't like his energy bubble messed with. Mm -hmm. So he's doing really well right now. So I feel like, I don't know if I want to disrupt that, but on the other hand, I'm like, I, I don't want him to have to live through this again in another life. So should I go ahead and help him with this, you know, past life healing? So like, that's where I'm at in yeah. the moment with, with him, because I think she she told me, she mentioned to me that something something happened to him in a past life. And if, mm -hmm. he's, if he doesn't resolve this, you know, it's, he's just going to keep living this you know, life after life. Yeah. And um, yeah, so... <laughs> Okay, well, when you're ready, let us know. <laughs> I know, I know. Like I said, I'm, I'm, you know, I've got that in the air right now. Like he's he's doing pretty well. Yeah. In in regards to the behavior, right? right? Like right. I, so do I do I want to mess with that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But um, yeah. So that that is one thing. It's it is incredibly interesting to me how much if you just open your mind a mm -hmm. little bit, like mm -hmm. just a little bit to let ideas in that you never would have considered previously. You can, you can get result. You can get even the smallest result from something. And it just, it, it takes you down this path where you're like, there, there's this whole world out there that mm -hmm. most people have no idea even exists. Um, we, in, in, you mentioned the opioid, the opioid receptors. I had, I had no intention of bringing this up, but you, you mentioned that opioid receptors in the brain. And we just finished watching Dope Sick on Hulu. I don't know if you've seen it yet, mm -hmm. but um, oh my gosh, it's probably some of Michael Keaton's best work. And by the way, I have to throw this in because um, my husband, he, argues with me on this. He doesn't, he's not even a movie buff, but to me, for me, Michael Keaton is the best Batman ever. Mm. Best Batman ever. And my husband thinks he's the worst Batman ever. <laughs> but anyway, um, just so that's on the record for the world that Michael Keaton is the best Batman. Um, anyway, it's possibly some of his best work and it's all about um, Purdue Pharma mm -hmm. and the opioid crisis in America and how, like, what happened? Now, I'm sure there's, you know, they they take some liberties with creating a, a show, but it's it's a series. It's a, not, I think it's a nine episode series. And oh my goodness, like if you 
didn't, first of all, if you didn't know anything about the opioid, cri the opioid crisis, this is really going to enlighten you. And also just like how misplaced our trust is in big mm -hmm. pharma to begin with. Holy moly. Like, I agree more. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so I would highly recommend that to anybody who's like, if you're just, if you're listening to this and you're a diehard, like I'm going to take my pills every day and, you know, get through this, like, boy, if that is one thing you could watch to, to open your eyes to, these people do not care about your health. <laughs> like, no, I, I have to concur with that because when I first got into holistic healing, I had a foot injury that would not heal. And I was in a boot. I was going to a podiatrist for three plus months. Now, I had actually gone to him for, I dealt with this issue for about, oh gosh, more than six to eight months. And then I was in a boot for three months. And then I realized that, you know what? I feel like I'm hitting my head against a wall and expecting a different result. And so I've got to do something differently. And I was on a vacation in Vancouver beautiful city and we were driving through Chinatown and there's like a market you know and they have all these signs and it's kind of half written in Chinese and half written in English and I just had an epiphany moment where I thought huh you know what when I get back home I need to find a Chinese doctor I don't know where that came from but it was just like this mind-blowing like what am I doing I this isn't working and if in my my Intuition told me if Chinese medicine didn't work, they wouldn't still be doing it for thousands and thousands of years and having mm -hmm. success. And I had never looked at Chinese medicine or even studied Chinese medicine. So when I got home, I, you know, this was back in the late, now this was like early 2000s. The internet was, you know, kind of not super new, but, you know, probably back in the dial up days, if I remember correctly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, just kind of picked somebody out that just kind of popped up in my search or whatever. And I called one, they didn't answer. So I called the next one. And that's the lady I went to. She does acupuncture and I am needle phobic like you. And I drug my husband at the time. And I said, you're coming with me because you know how I feel about needles. Mm -hmm. And I was sweating like crazy and nervous. And she was the kindest smartest I mean she was a like a real MD from China who moved to the States like 10 years prior so she had a real thick accent it was kind of hard for me to understand her mm -hmm. but she she healed me in eight weeks That's start true. to finish eight weeks with a combination of herbal medicine and like stuff to wraps the stuff to put on my foot for a little bit with just regular acupuncture for eight weeks and I was 100% blew my mind and that whole experience was like a major wake-up call and i said what else don't i know mm -hmm. that was that was the pandora's box you know mm -hmm. that you 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 have a, sh a mind shift to like okay this isn't working what else is there you try something as profound as tr traditional chinese medicine acupuncture whatever as a as a gateway Mm -hmm. so open your curiosity to explore other things and it is I, I I almost felt I remember at the time I felt like my own industry which was the fitness industry but in health had let me down because I'm like why did I know about this I was never taught anything and I'm in the health industry so it was a real eye-opening experience and then I started reading you know and just learning how the whole pharmaceutical industrial complex really works. And it's not about your health. It's about the money, follow the money. <laughs> just be kind of, yeah. that's kind of a mantra. You can just trust, follow the money, see whose pockets it goes into. It's not about your health. Um, I think we've seen that in the last couple of years. It's not about your health. For so, sure. you know, I just think it's a wake up. It's an opportunity to wake up and go, hmm. You just have to, like you said, you have to be open-minded. You have to have an open heart and just 
come at it from an observer, just, okay, I want to learn something. How does this work? How does it benefit? What can it do for me? And try it. I mean, what have you got to lose, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, and that's one of the really great things about a lot of the holistic modalities is that even if it isn't exactly what you or your body needs, it's not, it's not going to harm you either. Whereas right. it's completely the opposite with the pharmaceutical industry, where if it's not what you need, it could definitely harm you. In fact, even yeah. if it is what you need, it can definitely harm you. <laughs> right. Yeah. It does have some side effects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's how I look at it too. It's like, it's not going to hurt me. No. And I'll just know, like, first of all, I'll know what this is all about. I'll have that much more knowledge, which mm -hmm. then I can then pass on to other people, right? Because sure. what's the what's the good in having any knowledge if we can't help spread it and, and help other people? And then, you know, it's not going to hurt me. And then I can then move on to something else and it can open my eyes to, to something else that's out there. Right. Um, so that's, yeah, that's a, a really, really great point. Um, with yeah so i just i'm so glad that you agreed to come on the podcast and <laughs> and uh, let people know about what it is that you do because i know i've seen firsthand what it can do for um not just me but what you've done with some of my mm -hmm. pets and it's it's really wonderful um it's things that if honestly i were paying more attention to my own in intuition um, and not everybody can do this, but, you know, some of us can get to a, a place in our lives. We all are born with intuition, right? If you have that feeling in your gut, mm -hmm. that's what, like, I just read a, a meme the other day is like your heart lies to you and your, your brain can get confused, but your gut is always like spot on. And I know that's not exactly what the meme said, but basically, <laughs> Yeah, your gut is always telling you the truth um, mm -hmm. and pay attention to your gut. And you, if you are that kind of person that you do pay attention to your gut, then you already are like you're halfway there. <laughs> yes. Right. Tapping so, into that intuition inside of us that we like you said, we all have. Mm -hmm. We just have to. It's like a muscle. You have to train it. Mm -hmm. So the more you use it, the stronger it gets. And then you can really rely, you can start to really rely on that because it's leading you in the right path. Yeah. If that makes any sense. It, it does. And it's also really empowering. I know we were talking about that um, the other night when we were talking about integrative vet care and just finding vets in general. Mm -hmm. um, it's really empowering to be able to trust yourself because you have done the research and you do have knowledge, you, you have that, whether it's something you read <laughs> and something you've researched online or experiences that you can pull from, you have that wisdom to pull from. And, and it's really, it's, it's empowering. And I yeah. think that's one of the biggest things that I have gotten in my life from seeking out holistic modalities is just all of the knowledge I have gained has also helped me like build my confidence because I've always had very low self-confidence up until the last like six years or so when I've started learning and I've started researching and I've started to be able to trust myself more. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a very empowering thing. Mm -hmm. so. Because the establishment wants us to put our faith and trust in something else, not in, not in ourselves and not in what we know intuitively. So we have to take, we have to be willing to step out of that comfort zone. I think it's a comfort zone for a lot of people because it is the unknown, you know, mm -hmm. and even if you make a mistake and you, and you try something that didn't work, don't write it off completely. Maybe it just didn't work because it wasn't the right time. You know, mm -hmm. maybe it wasn't the right modality for whatever it is you're, but try it again down the road for something else. You know, or, you know, we learn from our mistakes. Hopefully we learn the biggest lessons from the mistakes that we make. So mm -hmm. even if it doesn't work, learn something from it and go, what can I, what can I walk away with? You know, 
maybe it was just being exposed and learning something else that you had never investigated before or tried before. It may not work this time, but it might be the perfect solution for something else down the road and you're preparing yourself for it. So I would just say, don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. Try something that you haven't tried. Follow your gut, you know, let that really be your guide and tap into that and, and just see where it takes you. Because at the end of the day, there's just, there's so much, there's so many great things that are just waiting for us to tap into and explore and learn and grow and have this amazing life. But we have to be able to step out of our fear and our comfort zone and and really trust that whatever's happening is for our highest good. And, you know, we can we can make the changes. We can get to where we want to be, even if it's just a learning experience for something else. You know, there's always a value to what we go through. So you have to kind of shift perspective, too. Yeah, that is so very true. I completely agree with with all of that. <laughs> and my hope for people is that they can start finding these more holistic modalities, whether it's muscle testing or energy healing or mm -hmm. Reiki, um, acupuncture, t uh, traditional Chinese veterinary medicine, whatever it may be. Yeah before it's our last ditch effort. Like that's my hope is to mm -hmm. just put enough out into the world that people have that they're like, I've heard of something somewhere. What mm -hmm. was that? You know, and, and instead of chasing pills over and over and over again and chasing, yep. you know, steroid injections and, you know, all of these things, like instead of chasing all of that for, months, sometimes years yeah. with some of our pets, right? That we can, we can find these more holistic modalities earlier on mm -hmm. for earlier intervention, because the early, you know, the earlier we can intervene in something that the better chance we have at correcting it quicker, it can be to correct it. Um, yeah. So that's kind of my hope. Well, in the world. <laughs> exactly. And being proactive. So once mm -hmm. you learn something, maybe what you're doing isn't really beneficial at all. Taking those steps to do something differently, to be proactive before there is a crisis, mm -hmm. before there is a health condition, you know, on whatever level, that's, those are great opportunities, you know, just starting to be proactive in things so that you're not reactionary when there is a crisis and you've, you've learned about all these modalities and tools um, as Ronnie and Karen say on inside scoop, you know, we have a big ass toolbox, you know, I like having a big ass toolbox to pull from so I can try all these different things um, and muscle test to figure out what is it that I can use to help the situation so that we're not left feeling like there's nothing else we can do. Cause there's always something we can do. There's always more that we can do. Yeah. I like that that term to reactionary because it is like, that's how we have been conditioned to live our lives. That's mm -hmm. how we have been conditioned to treat our health, um, our pets health. And it's, it's a shame, honestly, because it, it, to me, it's like this, I don't know. It's all this marketing that they have done. They've shoved down our throats for decades that it, it has absolutely nothing to do with our best interest and everything to do with somebody's bottom line. <laughs> and, um, yeah, we're, we're definitely, we definitely live in a very reactionary world. And, um, that's again, why I think, you know, our veterinarians are so burnt out and overutilized and yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's gotten to a point. I feel like it's gotten to a point where, like something's got to give because our veterinarians are overworked. They are expected to be everything for our pets, um, nutritionists and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, healthcare providers, and they're supposed to be surgeons and they're supposed to, I mean, they're supposed to do everything. And yeah, it, we're just, we're at this point where like, I think a lot of it has to do with personal responsibility 
as well, right? Mm -hmm. That that as a society, we've we've kind of been conditioned to not even like, especially some of the younger generations. And that makes me sound so old, but they <laughs> are, are just like nobody. Nobody has any personal response of it. I say nobody, but like that's a generalization. There are some, but so many people just don't have any personal responsibility and it's really taking an effect. I mean, it's, it's yeah. Our pets are, are suffering because of it, mm -hmm. but this conversation has taken a turn. So <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. I think it's part of it. It, it is. It's the, it's the overall perspective and why holistic health is so valuable and can be so beneficial to everybody. Yeah. And if you have a veterinarian who is open to, first of all, just being part of a medical team, yeah, that is to me crucial. Like mm -hmm. you don't have to agree with everything. That's fine. But be open to the idea that I have, I have a multitude of people and, and different modalities at my, like for my pet mm -hmm. so that we can, I can, and, and, and I'm the head of it, right? Like as my pet's guardian, my pet, being my pet's parent, whatever you want to call yourself owner, like you are the head of their team. So it's your responsibility to know, I mean, to, to learn and to expose yourself to all of these different things so that you have that reference when something does or something starts to happen and you're right. like, Oh man, like I need, I need to get on this before it gets bad. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's our responsibility to, to be the head of their, like we're, we are our pets advocate. Like if you don't know who to trust, you have to be able to trust yourself. Well, Pam, please tell everybody where they can find you. And like I said, I know you're 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 taking on so much right now, but I'm sure you have room for some Absolutely. more. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Now I have I have two websites. I have the perfectlyholistic.com, which is the blog site. Um, and then I have the, sh the store, the e-commerce site, which is shop.perfectlyholistic.com. It does cater to cats everything cat, you know, from supplements to nutraceuticals to homeopathy, flower essences, furniture, supplies, all that good stuff, as well as services. All of our services are on there. But then we also have a YouTube channel and Facebook and Instagram. I'm on Twitter as well. It's all under Perfectly Holistic. So it's easy to find us. So if people have questions, you can reach out through one of those modalities or even through Pam at perfectly holistic.com. That's my email address. So happy to be of service and support, you know, for people who are really looking and seeking holistic approaches for their pets and um, just an honor to be serving pet parents. It is. And one more question before I let you go, you just said you do really cater to cats. Can you tell me why that is? Well, the long story of it, the, the short story version to the long story is that there was a cat that started it all. So, yeah, Snow Bear was my kitty who inspired me to start Perfectly Holistic when he died suddenly after being revaccinated um, in order to be boarded. And so he, um, yeah, he passed away within seven days of being revaccinated. And it was, um, it wasn't something I wanted to do, but I, my hand was forced just for a boarding requirement, which is really, really unfortunate. And yeah, that that's a whole nother topic. Um, so it inspired me to start a business, start Perfectly Holistic and be a resource and teach people what I've learned. Don't do what I did. <laughs> you know, learn from my mistakes. Don't, don't make them, you know. I wanted to help educate pet parents how to be, how to take a more holistic approach for their pets. And I do work with dogs as far as the muscle testing and the, the 
energy work and things like that too. So we do, we, we take pets in general, but my heart has always been with cats. I feel like maybe I was a cat in a very previous, you know, way long time ago, but I just tend to gravitate toward them and they tend to find me. It's really, really incredible. So I have this burning desire to help cats and it is a calling, I think. But I've had I've had cats in my life since the day I was born, literally. My parents, I have a picture of myself as a baby in a stocking because it was like I was born December 9th. So it was Christmas season. And they have a picture of me kind of sticking out of a big old stocking on the floor with a white cat next to me. Mm-hmm. So I was imprinted very, very young with cats, obviously, and they've never left my life. So um and they are just underserved. It's a dog's world and cats really get left out. And so I just feel like I am, it is my purpose to fill in that gap in the cat realm. So that's what I'm doing. And it's the best job ever. It is, isn't it? it I is. love that. And I, I know I told you I've, I got my start with cats too. And cats are so very special to me, but um I just can't leave them out. I know that, you know, what I'm paid to do is to train dogs, but Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I can't, I can't leave the cats out because I just, I have a very, yeah, they're very special to me as well. I was told that my, what do I, what do I want to call it? Like the, the goddess that watches over me is best at. And so I, I'm just, that just sounds like me. Like I've always been drawn to everything ancient Egypt. Like that's my thing. Like if it were safe to go, I, I would have been in Egypt by now. <laughs> I know it's not, it's not safe. It's not safe mm-hmm. right now. But um, like that has always been like, and that's what I associate. Like that is the one thing I associate with Egypt more than anything is cats. Cats. Um, that is they were worship those cool. gods, and I, they never forgot it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we worship them today. <laughs> and Romeo knows that very well, too. Yes, he, does. he He reminds me many times a day. <laughs> <laughs> I know. They're so special. I think they're very highly spiritual beings. They yeah. really are. It's They're incredible. Yeah. They are. Like, to the point where I get scared sometimes when they're like, looking off into what I see as nothing. I'm like, Lord, please help me right now. (laughs) What are you looking at? Yeah. I have one of my cats, Gunner, has, he was, he had a litter mate who was a twin, literally. And so we got both kittens when they were about 11 weeks old and they were bonded twins. Mm -hmm. And Rocket passed away March 28th last year. And I did a recent animal communication session when I was hiring these ladies. And one of the, I don't remember who spoke to him because I did a lot of interviews. And one of the ladies I asked, you know, ask Gunner if he misses his brother. And in the reply, it was so cool. He's like, no, I don't miss him because I see him all the time. He's here all the time. And so it's like he's never gone. So I don't miss him. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I know. Because wow. it was they were, they were so bonded. And even Aylin, the baby, was so bonded to him. And when he passed, they grieved for a couple weeks. And I've always just, you know, wondered how are they feeling? How are they doing? And so that was just one of the questions I threw out for him. And I was really surprised to get that answer. It's like, oh, no, he's here all the time. I see him all the time. Like, well, of course. Yeah. You know, incredible. It is incredible. So, Mm. yeah, they're just incredible beings. That's wonderful. Well, everybody, please go check out Perfectly Holistic. (laughs) P-U-R-R-R, perfectlyholistic.com. And I will, of course, I'll make sure to post the link in the show notes and below the video and all the wonderful things awesome. check her out and she's on she's on facebook she's on youtube um instagram so wherever you are make sure you are following her and 
Yeah, if you need if you need her services, of course. <laughs> I would highly recommend that. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been fun chatting with you again. You too. Um, yeah, so with that, everybody, I'm going to say bye. Give some extra love to your dogs and your cats from both me and Pam this Absolutely. week. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. I'll see you all next week. Oh, oh, oh.